Hey, this is Mr. Janes. In this video, we're going to be talking about inductive versus deductive reasoning, two different kinds of logical reasoning. A couple quick reminders. As you're watching this video, please make sure you're taking notes down on your note sheet. Um, if you need to pause the video to write something down or maybe rewind the video to go back and see something again, that's a good idea. Please make sure to do that. And if I ask you to pause the video and maybe try a problem yourself uh, before going on, make sure that you do pause the video, try the problem, then press play and keep going to see if you are right. All right, so let's start with inductive reasoning. What is inductive reasoning? Well, inductive reasoning is a type of, well, let me just explain. Inductive reasoning uses patterns, okay, patterns. It uses observations, observations. It uses uh, examples. And it uses trials, okay? okay? It uses all those things, okay, to form a kind of conclusion. And in math, we call that conclusion a conjecture. So a conjecture is a mathematical, okay, mathematical theory or generalization. Okay, so we've got inductive reasoning to make conjectures. Well, before I go on, let's see what an example of a uh, inductive reasoning and a conjecture could be. Okay, this is not on your paper, but um, you should take a look at here. Here is what we're trying to, to prove. Mr. McCain drove his car into the lamppost outside. Okay, here are some inductive reasons that Mr. McCain drove his lamppost in the, his car into the lamppost outside. Well. He's drove, driven poorly in four of the past five days. He's swerving around, barely missing cars, right? He was up on the sidewalk the other day. So I'm seeing a pattern, and I think that because he's driving poorly in the four of the past five days, he drove his car to a lamppost. Or, well, we saw him swerve to miss a bus yesterday. So using inductive reasoning, I'm going to conjecture that he hit the lamppost. Or how about this one? Mr. McCain has hit five lampposts in the last year. Wow. So I'm making an observation, I'm following a pattern, and I'm making the conjecture that Mr. McCain drove his car into the lamppost outside. Okay, that's my conjecture based on these patterns. Okay? And again, I'm using inductive reasoning, right? Inductive reasoning uses patterns. Okay? What other kinds of patterns could we see for inductive reasoning? Well, we could see maybe numerical patterns, okay, maybe some sort of number sequence, and maybe the sequence has to do with addition, subtraction, maybe multiplication, maybe a little bit of division. Could even involve maybe a square root or maybe a squaring, some sort of exponent, okay, could see some sort of numerical pattern. Uh, maybe we'll see patterns in, in pictures, maybe in shapes, okay. Um, we could see patterns in a paragraph. Or, like we just saw with Mr. McCain, our patterns could simply be maybe real, real world. Okay? Something about Mr. McCain hitting a lamppost, right? It's seeing patterns that way. The second kind of reasoning we have is deductive reasoning. And this is different from inductive reasoning. Remember, uh, with inductive reasoning, we're talking about patterns and, and, and observations and trials and examples. But deductive reasoning is, is a little more solid than that. Deductive reasoning uses things like laws, okay? It uses the facts, okay? It uses axioms, which we'll talk about in a minute, and theorems, which we'll also talk about in a minute. And it, base, it more or less uses just sound logic, okay? And we use all those things to create what we call a proof. And a proof is just a set of logical arguments um, that forms a conclusion. 
Let's see some examples of deductive reasoning. Let's go back to Mr. McCain, right? Mr. McCain drove the, his car into the lamppost outside. Remember before, with inductive reasoning, we were talking about patterns. But with deductive reasoning, we're going to talk about facts, okay, and logic. So, fact number one. His wife saw him leave the house with his car undamaged. Okay, so he left the house in the morning. Car was fine. Fact number two. He is now has a dent in his car. Ooh, all right. Fact number three. The lamp post was broken at 6.30 a.m. We, we have some footage. And fact number four, he was the only one at the school. Okay, so we're not looking at patterns here. We're not looking at just trials or simple observations. Now we have facts, and we're going to use logic to say, well, okay, if he was the only one here at 6.30, right, and his car started the day undamaged, and now he's dead in his car, okay, I'm going to prove, uh, no, sorry, proof, I'm going to have proof, and create this theorem that says that Mr. McCain drove his car into the lamppost outside. I'm using facts, I'm using logic, okay? So remember, inductive is patterns and examples and observations, deductive is facts and logic, okay? Um, well, wait, I just used the word theorem, but we haven't actually talked about what a theorem is. So let's go back and, and write that down really quick. Okay. So a theorem, a theorem is a statement that we are going to prove to be true. So a statement slash it's, it's, it's a fact, okay, that must be proven to be true. For example, Mr. McCain's car hitting, uh, hitting the lamppost. It's a th we call that a theorem or a property because he, we don't know. It's not, it's not a you know, given fact that he hit the lamppost. We've got to prove that ourselves using what we did before. Okay? Um, another uh, more mathematical one is vertical angles. We've said before that vertical angles, this angle and this angle, are congruent. But actually, we've got to prove that. And in later classes, we will actually show why vertical angles are congruent. We'll talk about that later. Okay. On the other hand, we have things called axioms or postulates. And axioms or postulates are statements, statements that um, are true without proof. Okay, they're true without proof. And we've already talked about some, ax or some axioms in class. Uh, for example, the fact that two points make a line. That is actually an, an axiom. Okay? Or the fact that if we have a line like this, okay, with points A, B, and C, we could say that AB plus BC equals AC. Okay, that's, a, that's an axiom. We don't have to prove those facts. They just, they're just there. Let's do another couple of quick examples of inductive versus deductive reasoning. Okay. What about this? Two obtuse angles cannot be supplementary. Okay. What would the inductive approach to that be? Well, let's say, let's give an example, right? Because inductive is all about examples and, and, um, and patterns. So here's an example. 100 degree angles obtuse. Okay. 120 degree angles obtuse. Yeah, it's, okay. it's greater than 90. Uh, and if I do 100 plus 120, I get 220 degrees. And that's definitely more than 180 degrees. And so they're not supplementary. Okay? So I'm going to conjecture. Based on that one observation, I'm going to make a conjecture that two obtuse angles cannot be supplementary because I just made up my own example. Right? That's inductive. On the other hand, deductive... Okay, is all about facts and logic. So, fact number one. Obtuse means more than 90 degrees. It's a fact. Here's our, our next step. Fact, if I add two angles more than 90 degrees together, the result has to be more than 180 degrees. Ooh, typo. Spelling. That's a fact. Okay, fact number three. Supplementary angles must add to 180 degrees. Okay? So I, this is my proof, 
right here. That's my proof. And I'm going to make the theorem that two obtuse angles cannot be supplementary. I use facts, I use logical reasoning, I use deductive logic. On the other hand, inductive is all about an example. Okay, an example, seeing some sort of pattern. Flip to the side of your notes. Okay, this is the life cycle of mathematics. Oftentimes in math, we use both inductive and deductive reasoning. Okay, typically we use inductive first and deductive second. Let me give you an example. Let's say I saw, okay, I looked out my window, look at the highway, okay, there's my dotted line. And I saw, coming down the road, okay, we had a blue car. This is my terrible car. All right, there's a wheel, there's a wheel, there's a window, there's a back window. All right, so I, got, I see a blue car coming down the road, right? And then I see another blue car. And I see another blue car. At this point, I'm going to make a guess, right, a wild guess, that I think that all the cars coming down the road are blue. So then I see, you know, a few more come down, a few more, 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 more. I end up seeing a hundred blue cars coming down the road. Now I can make an educated guess, thinking, all right, so I'm thinking that the next car that comes is going to be blue. All the cars are going to be blue. Okay, so now I'm going to collect some data. I'm going to set up maybe a little, a little video camera here, okay, a little video camera to see the cars coming down the road. Okay, and I collect, I roll that video camera for a whole day. And over that day, I record some results. I see that 500 blue cars went through that, that, uh, that road on my video camera. Okay? So I see that pattern, and I'm going to make a conjecture. My conjecture is that um, all the cars okay, are blue. All the cars are blue. Okay? Um, but that's not really a proof. I, who knows? The next one could, could be purple or white or silver. I don't know that for sure. I'm only using inductive reasoning. To know for sure that the next car will be blue, we need to have some sort of proof, right? Some sort of proof, some facts. So let's say I take a walk up the street, okay, far up the street, and I see there is a truck, okay, a truck overturned. And the truck is broken and it is spewing blue paint. Blue paint's going everywhere. The blue paint is everywhere. So I can see the cars coming through, okay? You know, cars coming through that aren't blue, okay? And they go through and they come out as blue cars. Now I've got facts. I can see, okay, fact one, cars go in. Fact two, truck spewing blue paint. Fact three, they come out as blue cars. I can now have a proof and some logical reasoning to say that all the cars are blue. Okay, all the cars are blue. That's my, I've proven that now. And the last step is to say, okay, well, let's, let's double check. Let's get a little closer, make sure that, yeah, all the cars are blue, that it's not some sort of magic coming and the cars are just turning blue. Let's make sure that the cars aren't going in blue and let's reflect, let's challenge, let's, let's maybe, maybe we can even put some cars through the road and, and, maybe come with some counterexamples. Are you sure? Are you sure that all the cars are going to be blue? And we say, yes, definitely sure. All the cars coming through are blue. Now we've created a theorem. We've gone all the way from a wild guess, an educated guess, a conjecture, a proof, all the way to a theorem. All the way to the theorem. So, here's your job. Go back to the bottom of your notes, okay? I want you to prove to me that Mr. Jaynes robs a bank. Come up with some inductive reasons, some patterns, some patterns, some observations, right? How you know Mr. Jansen robbed the bank. Next, I want you to come up with some deductive, logical facts. How do you know Mr. Jansen robbed the bank? We'll share those out next class. All right. Hope you've enjoyed watching the video. Make sure you go back and rewind if you need to. Otherwise, I'll see you in next class. And yes, 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 yes. The counterexample thing is blank. We'll talk about that next time, so just keep it blank. We'll see you then.